That one is probably gonna gross about 115 this year. Expenses are probably about 50 to 60K. Mm -hmm. How so, do you find how do you find like these deals? You know? I want something that will cash flow. What's the thing that you fuck with on the most? When was the last time you cleaned over 200 pounds? Been uh, years probably. Seriously? We bought it two years ago uh -huh. and it's still not rented yet. Fuck! <laughs> Real quick, I want to apologize in advance. I wanted to work out in a gym while chatting real estate while also doing some specific lifts. Hindsight, don't put a barbell in front because then you can't put a lapel mic. So it is a little echoey. So I put in captions down below, but I hope you enjoy. So today I am with George Maciel and we are at his gym. Brickhouse Fitness? Brickhouse Fitness, yep. And we are talking all things real estate investing. He's gonna buy, it's not even your first real estate profit, but at least your first in the US then, huh? That's what I'm looking for. Looking for my first mid to long-term investment. Okay. And uh, I want it, I want all the things. I wanted to, you know, appreciate super quick and I wanted to cash flow like no other. So Josh here is helping me out with that and giving me some, giving me some sound advice. So he has a couple of scenarios. He has a nest egg that we can play with or running through different scenarios. And then we're also lifting in between. So see. can't wait to get at it. How many lifts do you want to do? I'll just keep going until it feels heavy, then we'll pitch something else. Yeah, I want to do push press today. Okay. So we do this and then are you good with it? Yeah. Wait, you bought a boutique hotel? So my parents, my mom owns a boutique hotel and she's currently it's only in the final stages of building. So, um, and, and we've invested in it, I've invested in it, my, my, my brother and my sister have invested in it. Okay. So, yeah. How um, many rooms? Uh, right now it's 12, 12 okay. rooms. 12 rooms, um, that's on the main, like the main area. Like when you go into that town, it's yeah. right off the main road. It's like maybe four to 600 meters from the ocean. It's really close. Um, and then we own some land there too. Okay. So just like kind of like different parts of town. Yeah. So we can build on it. There's homes already. There. It's a very unique landscape because when you go there, most areas are like flat. This one actually goes up. So there's some kind of a slope. So yeah. wherever you build, like a lot of people build like behind like that main road. So it just, you can continue it for, for a mile or something like that, which is really nice. Very unique. And how much longer is that one built? Um, I think we should be done next year, 2024. Yeah, you're going to put it on like Airbnb and- We are Airbnb. actually already renting out rooms. Oh. Yeah, even like during construction, people are still sitting there. And right now the busy season is from October to April. Okay. And it's fully booked. Yeah. yeah. It's seasonal though, so the highest traffic is Occupancy is right now, but yeah, it's nice. Okay. Nice little beach town. So you got that going. Yeah. And then you were thinking about Cleveland. Why the Midwest? Because it seems like you have a competitive advantage in. Um, yeah. Honestly, I was I was just interested in the cash flowing opportunities yeah. of markets like Cleveland and Columbus in those areas, but I wasn't 100% sure like if that was the best strategy since those are low income homes. Mm. Um, and I know a lot of those homes are like section eight homes. So I wasn't really sure how that, how profitable that is. I know you did it, so that's why I wanted to get some feedback. And yeah, so I mean, we bought our first one Three years ago, like that, like this real estate investment was our COVID project. Uh huh. So we bought a rent ready long term rental in Columbus, Ohio for 120000 A mortgage payment is 600 bucks a month. And then it rents for 1300 Okay. Off one house. We did have to put $30,000 down for the first house. Was that 20%? 20%. Okay. What loan did you use? We used to use a, like a conventional investment loan. So okay. Nothing too crazy. Obviously had low interest rates at the time. 
Right. Um, the next deal we bought, I bought like a full rehab project. So Where? I found a house, Columbus. Okay. Found a house on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Literally like some Columbus investors. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got it for $75,000. Put in $30,000 for rehab. And then that one appraised for 185000 so we were all in for like 110, 115 with holding costs. Uh huh. Cash out refi. All of our money out. Uh, I mean, with the interest rate, it probably cash flows, I don't know, 150 bucks, I mean, like really nothing. But then there's 50, 55, and fourth equity there after the refi. Nice. That we're not, and I'll be just not touching it until. Right. Whenever. And then after that, we did. Few more of the, those deals. We didn't have, you know, we only had a limited amount of cash to start with. So then we did some partnerships with some friends. Mm -hmm. Did some with my dad. Mm -hmm. Then we bought an Airbnb in Joshua Tree. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Um, What's been your most profitable venture? I think profitable has different meanings. Okay. Like there's like the cash flow side. And then there's also like the equity side. Right. So like the bird deals, I wish I would have done 10 more of those. Like you need, especially like interest was super low. Mm -hmm. Like, cause then you were stacking 50, 60 K in equity, like tax free. Mm -hmm. And that would have been like a nice nest egg to then cash out. You're talking about that corn this rehab deal? Yeah, if I did like 10 more of those. Okay. The, the, the best, Property to date now is our Branson, Missouri short term rental. Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri. How did you get to that market from Columbus? Um, <laughs> we're in too many markets. Okay, so we're in Columbus, Dallas, Joshua, Branson, Missouri, Lake Tahoe. And a couple of these are management, markets, including the Branson, Missouri, actually, as a management partnership. But we found the deal, found the team, and I mean, much like you picking a long-term rental market, yeah, and you were probably just Googling like which market would make the most money, yeah, you could do the same one. And so you can just Google, like there's a couple sites, like airdna.co or Rabu data.rabu and it will you can like plug in my address and like zillow it'll tell you how much it estimates for the rental rate. income will be at that point i was trying to figure out like we did the job tree one and that has been year one was cool this year it's slowed down just because the la kids aren't partnering up in jack tree as much as okay and also a lot of new development uh but branson missouri is like a really like established vacation rental market i see so you're using that for Airbnb rentals. Mm -hmm. Got it. Airbnb, the Airbnb, but yeah, short term rentals. Mm -hmm. And that one, the house we got, got it for 185, fully for, it was an existing short term rental. Okay. And then from there, um, from there, we just refreshed some of the furniture. So you bought that one for 185K. The partner that we bought that one with had like secured a line of credit off of their investment, so they bought it cash. Mm -hmm. And then that one is probably gonna gross about 115 this year. Expenses are probably about 50 to 60 K. Mm -hmm. And so then it's just profit split based off of. It's pretty good. Yeah. How so, do you find how do you find like these deals, man? Um I mean, this one was technically on the market. You just have to, you have to figure out, like, do you manage the Airbnb yet or the vacation rentals down over in Mexico yet? Uh, my mom does all the, like, bookings and management. How active do you want to be in the management? Not much. Then you don't want an Airbnb. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can hire someone to do it for you. They'll probably take like 10 to 20% off the top. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking like in the beginning, like it's okay to do a lot of the work, 
right? Until you get it, you, until you get your portfolio to a certain level where you can probably hire someone else, like a VA or yeah, someone to manage it for you. But in the beginning, you want to save, you want to, you want to save as much money, right? And you want to learn the process a little right. bit. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I mean, for you, it'd be, it sounds like long-term rental. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could totally still find long-term rentals. Where do you see the market going right now? With, with the housing, investments, do you see some markets performing potentially better than others when it comes to um, short-term rentals versus long-term rentals? Oh, totally. I just put 10 on. And you want to go 25. Oh, I totally think, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the news, but like they, the Fed's already said they're going to drop rates like six times next year. Yep. Which means all markets will go up next year, mm-hmm. regardless. Just because rates will come down, all mar- competition will go higher, all house prices goes up. So like ideally, if you can lock in an investment property right now and then have a loan that's maybe a like there are certain loan products that could mm-hmm. be adjustable after the first year and or you refinance and you figure out in the numbers if it makes sense to refinance it. But for you, I think it sounds like you want a long-term rental somewhere. I do. Um, I want something that will cash flow. So it's bringing me money um, where I can rent it out. Right? So... Long-term rental, that'd be great. I'm okay with short-term rental, that's fine, but that's more like Airbnb. Yeah. Um, honestly, somewhere where I can go for vacation would be ideal. Why? <laughs> What's that? Why? Just have a vacation rental. So on a vacation in Cleveland? No. <laughs> but I mean, priority is cash flow, right? Yeah. That's my main thing. So any market that will produce that, that's fine. Just buy a rental anywhere and then sign up for masterminds wherever you want a vacation. True. Yeah. The only, yeah. The only, the, like, if you went the short-term rental route, then sure, go buy a short-term rental where you want a vacation. Mm-hmm. But most long-term rentals are not going to be in places that you want a vacation. Right. That makes sense. Especially for cash flow. Like, if it's if you're like equity play, sure, go buy something in a decent market that's okay. Yeah, yeah you're going to pay a pretty penny for that, right? Yeah. Um, what are your top three markets right now, going into 2024, that you see are the best ones? I mean, for cash flow. Yeah, do your set. Power <laughs> <laughs> plus I mean, you could literally throw a dart in the Midwest with your eyes closed. That's it, huh? And it'll work. <laughs> and That's the, pretty sound. All of them have, like, tenant laws are good. If you look hard enough, they'll have deals. Okay, the question is, if I said, what's the nest egg you have that you're, like, wanting to invest in? That probably determines the market more so. Like, is it $50,000? Is it $30,000? Is it $100,000? Like how much would that bucket be? That's true. I mean, I'd, I'd be willing to do something north of 75. So top would be a hundred. Okay. So, so you have a hundred thousand dollars to play with. Yeah. Now the other question is what do you, cause that's, that's actually, that's a decent amount of money. That's more than you probably need to do one long-term rental in the Midwest for sure. What do you want as a result? I want the best of both, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want it to cash flow and appreciate. Is that possible? Yeah. Yes. I think 
I, I have to be realistic. Of course, it's not going to be like a market like uh, California, where the appreciation is crazy, but um, a decent appreciation plus cash flow is really ideal. I mean, now I know we're, we're getting a little bit more narrow now with the selection. That, that was the point, right? Yeah. I think that's... <laughs> Look, oh, snap, crackle pop. Did you hear that? <laughs> is that knee or hip? No, it's my knees. Oh, shit. And my knees always pop. Mm. Grand. That opens up a lot of things, actually. Well, yeah. I should take that off. Is that like working out too hard? No, it's like my wrist is flexing too much. Hey, you know, for some OGs, not doing bad, huh? With the weights and talking? What's that? So for some OGs, you're not doing too bad with the weights and talking, huh? Nate, you know what? <laughs> I haven't really cleaned in a long time. See how 225 smooth feels. I don't know about smooth, but uh, it'll feel. I'll feel it. I think what could be an interesting play, like, have you heard of midterm rentals? Uh, elaborate. So, long term rentals, you have a tenant that sounds like a year lease typically. Midterm, mm -hmm. uh, short term rentals are there for the weekend to go have fun and enjoy. But you have your midterm medium stay, where it's corporate housing, travel nurses. Oh, yeah. The 30 to 90 Those are great. months. Yeah, my girlfriend's doing that. She's, oh, she's, she's, she's well, she, she's not renting, she's not, executing the short-term rental. She's exercising the short-term rental play by staying there, because she's a nurse. Ah. So she's staying. But she's a travel nurse. She's a travel nurse. I, I like that a lot. I mean, that could be an interesting play. Because then you get more cash flow for less money and less effort. Because then instead of penance being in there every, yeah. you know, Every weekend, every two days, yeah. throwing a party, yeah, mm -hmm. clean it up. We'll be there from one month to six months. Yeah. And now we're getting more local, right? We're getting more localized on the re like the areas. Because you wanna be, if it's like travel nursing, corporate housing, you wanna be close to those facilities, right? And we yeah. get the furniture out there. So there's another right. layer. Right. Yeah, that could be good though. I like that too. I've never rehabbed anything other than this gym. I mean, you got your, you got your family that'll help. Yeah. You get like, hey, this, does this bid look right? You get three bids, they can. Have you done the bidding? Like, have you done the, yeah, like. For contractors? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for all the projects. Everything gets three bids, no matter what. What's the thing that you fucked up on the most? That's cost you the most money. Um, All right, two twenty five gonna be. <laughs> That's it. When's the last time you cleaned over 200 pounds? It's been a, a, a years, probably. Seriously? At least a year. A what? I mean, I front squat. We I just, clean? Uh, I hang clean, like hang power clean. <laughs> but I don't like squat clean. All right, the biggest, like, mistake so far that's cost the most amount of money. Uh -huh. Had an agent, it's a house in Columbus. We bought it two years ago uh -huh. and it's still not rented yet. Fuck! <laughs> so, but I, I'm assuming the, okay, that's a loss. Tax write off, yes? Okay, so. <laughs> it gets better. You tell me if this is a loss. Here, hold on. As I tell you the story, let's do the bench on that side. Okay. Then I get. 
your reaction as I tell the okay. story. Um, I bought this house. My agent in Columbus sent it to me. Uh -huh. We bought it. I didn't realize that the two houses next door, like the exact, that's our house, literally the ones next door, are uh, sober living houses. Okay. Right, so people who come in there to get rehabilitated and then move out. And so after they leave the county uh, facility, then they have moved into a house, and that's the house. And so there's a, there's a nonprofit that runs them. I did not realize that when they closed on the house. Ouch, okay. Right, so that was mistake number one. Uh, we didn't do the research, right? Not enough research done. But it, it felt so hard, like, like you don't really know who's living in the house next door. You're not gonna knock on every single house, especially if it's gonna be a rental. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, we, we initially bought this house trying to, for it to be a flip. Let's see. Um, all right, let's see how this <laughs> goes. Uh, I'm gonna try and touch and go with you. Yeah, I'm touch and go. All right, that's top set. That's, that's pretty good. Um, so really, it's supposed to be a flip. Our contractor that we end up going with ended up taking 14 months to finish the project and started it six months late. That's a big loss. Yeah. Uh, we had, we bought the house. Here, do your set. Oh. Let's try that again. Squat clean? More than likely. <laughs> Can even work. Up, 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 up. Woo! All right. They're getting on the perspective. That's my PR. <laughs> Is that really? Like in a wash? I, well, I guess like you, haven't two, like you haven't done over 200 in years, yeah. right? Happy with that. <laughs> well, so that was a big mistake. Okay. Yeah. Hindsight. But kind of like, yes, probably should have vetted the neighborhood better. Uh -huh. So we bought the house for $75,000. I initially thought that was going to be a flip. Uh -huh. Comps in the area for flips were selling at two seventy five dollars to three hundred. dollars It's a pretty high comp. When was this? Two years ago. Okay. And it, the house is also like down to the studs. So there was nothing on the inside. There was no, and there was no mechanicals. There was no plumbing, no electric. Uh -huh. It was like, this, it was just a structure. Mm -hmm. And it was vacant for 20 years. The previous owner bought it for $10,000, like 20, 30 years ago. It was just sitting vacant. Mm -hmm. Nuisance property at this point. Bought it for 75. The contractor, when finished, he put $135,000 in the rehab. And that's to get it like all new plumbing, electrical, HVAC, finish it out. I mean, put granite countertops. Some hardwood floors in there too, not LVP. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was gonna be a flip. Um, and then as we we're finishing, that's when we found out that it was still the living room. Can we actually like who's gonna buy the house next to the two sober living houses? I guess you can turn it into a sober living home. And so that's what we tried to do. Yeah. Like, okay, the flip's done. Let's try and negotiate with the nonprofit. She was looking for more rooms. Yeah. And I was like, well, we had along the middle, you might as well take us over. And we're trying to negotiate on pricing. And then every time that we were finishing, like we were 99% done with the contractor work, they were lagging on some punch of stuff. She's like, well, I'm ready to sign. Ah, house is not ready. Two months later, still dragging on the punch work, like the punch of stuff. And then eventually she's like, you know what? I don't even know, just find someone else. Uh, we did eventually get it appraised though. So it did mm -hmm. appraise for $275,000. Oh, $275, so, hey, what's up, man? Good. So we were able to pay back initial investors, all the money plus the interest. Yeah. We still have a decent amount of equity baked in, but it wasn't the flip that we wanted it to do. 
So now you're just holding it. Now we're holding it and it's no. on the market to get rented right now. Cool. Push press? Push press. All right, I'm short, so. Uh, we can set up our own bar if you want. That's easier, or I don't mind sharing. I'll share. Yeah? Okay. Um, all right. What do you want, quarters? Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's probably like the biggest. We had to dump in some extra money to pay off our investors. We had a year to get on it. Um, and then now it's all these stuff. The money that we've dumped into it is stuck inside the equity of the house. And so did you hire a company to rent out the property? We were trying to rent it out ourselves. Okay. And then that wasn't going so well. And so the property management company who I use for my other long-term rentals is now gonna manage this one. So actually I just sent a document yesterday for them to take it over. How do you find these? partners or other investors. Do you do you use private money? Yeah, for this deal, it was private money. Um, Can you explain what private money is for like a newbie investor? Yeah, investor? so let's say, say you have $100,000. Can you hit this real quick? Oh, you didn't hit it yet, no. okay. So say I have a project and I need, like for this specific deal, I need $100,000 to make this deal happen. If I said, hey, in a, I need to borrow the money for a year and after the year, I'm either gonna sell the house or cash out refi and actually make 150K back and I'll give you an extra $10,000 back when it's all said and done after a year. But you do no work, I do all work. And if I default on the project, you take ownership of the house. So then you actually have a mortgage on the house. You're not officially the bank. That's how it works. And it's the most simple it's form. Right. Are the terms, are the rates that you get from a private lender similar to what the current market rate would be? Um, I mean, at that time, interest rates were like 4%, and so I was gonna give them a guaranteed 10. I mean, obviously- So it's a little sharkish. It's like, if you were the private money lender, like trying to charge 10%. Mm -hmm. Yes and no. So like, for example, obviously if you just have a stack, like if you have a crap ton of cash, then you don't need a bank, you don't need any lenders. Right. Uh, but at the same time, if you get to a point where you're really good, the thing that usually stops you isn't the deal flow anymore. It's actually how much money do you have to deploy. And so if, for example, like the house that I did, it's like an infinite, right? Meaning I got all of my money back plus more. Now, if I can give someone 10%, but I still make 20% off the top of it, and now I make 20% of whatever that margin is without any of my own money down. Would you do that deal? Of course. And so could you find 10 of those, now you make 200, give away 100, mm -hmm. and everybody wins. That's right. Yeah. And then there's bigger family offices. Like when people say like, oh, I have a family office, like investment firm. They are now doing that on a, you know, million, tens of million dollar scale at a single time. And some of them are asking for an equity stake in the deal now too. Mm -hmm. yes. And then there's hard money lending. Have you heard of that one? Oh, what's the difference between hard money and private? Kind of the same, depending on who you ask. How would you define it to be different or your experience? I mean, hard money, you're usually dealing with some type of institution. Some type of 
formal lending company versus private money is usually just a rich person you know. And it's necessarily not a formalized business. And usually hard money, short term lending, six to 12 months, only doing fixer upper projects. You usually have to have some experience too in order to qualify for the loan products. And then they're also charged points up front. So there's you know one to three percent of the loan up front. You even have to pay them. Uh, to even acquire the financing. Plus it's a 15% interest. I think the most I've been on just is like 13%. So hard money usually has Candy. slightly higher interest can have can be more expensive. Candy more expensive. And those people who eventually like end up in the game who will, because hard money will still require like 10% down to do a project, at least mm -hmm. 10 to 15% down. Who is this ideal for? Someone who has a short term fixer upper project. That needs money fast. Yeah, so it's either a flipper okay. or someone who wants to do like a bird deal and then refinance after it's rehabbed, get it rented out, and then put in a traditional lending product to refinance all the equity out and pay off the private or hard money. And so that's what we did. We did hard money for the, those fix and flip rentals, mm -hmm. the bird deals that we did. We did hard money, paid a bunch of points, bunch of interest, but we were able to pay off all that money plus even get another check for 10 grand at the end of it. You knew based on the numbers that you ran. Yeah. <laughs> like per deal that we get, I'm probably looking at 200 deals. It's a lot of deals. Yeah, for like that Josh and Cheer movie, I had the number. We analyzed 196 deals for our first Airbnb. Do you use a tool or a system? Spreadsheet. Spreadsheets? But I did build a system now, too. I built a Zillow scraper. So I scrape all the Zillow listings. And then it builds in expected rehab costs, mm -hmm. expensive rent prices, and it'll tell me how much I should expect to make at the end of it. So it saves a lot of time yeah. to do that versus traditional spreadsheet. Smart. And then I sold the spreadsheet and I found it got sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Where's the joint come there? Uh, no, it was like a one time I sold them like 2,000 downloads. So I need to pitch them for a renewal now, actually. <laughs> that felt good. Yeah. Better than that. <laughs> you want to go next? Take this off, put on the plate. Thank you. Yeah, man, I'd mean, say if you, if you have that much to play with, a midterm rental play in the Midwest might be a good idea. If you were me, to maximize profit and so cash flow, would you go in for short-term rehab, rental, or would you do mid-term, long-term? What would be your strategy? Um, it depends on how active you want to be. So, like, short-term rentals are super active. Uh -huh. Everyone checks in on Friday nights. Right. So if you had a restaurant at the bar and your guest comes in on Friday nights, I have left a downtown bar because the Airbnb wasn't clean on a Friday night. It's like, oh crap, the guest shows up, it's not clean. Hey, I'm gonna... You're calling your maid service. Like, yeah, I'm gonna send you money back for dinner. Dinner's on us. I have to find another cleaner because our cleaner's out of town. So I had to like call my network to find another cleaner real fast, pay her a premium rate to come out on a Friday to rush to clean this house. And that'll happen more, more times than you want. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a headache. It, uh, it is. It, it, it's also the biggest tax right now, though. Because, here, I'll tell you. Yeah. 
Nice. Solid. Okay, from like a tax write off purposes, there's active income and passive income. Mm -hmm. Long term rentals are passive income, meaning all the money you make in this gym, you can't use that to offset free gym income. Right. But a short term rental is now active income if you are the manager. And so you material participate, and now it's active income. So say you can take a loss on the short term rental because you can depreciate everything inside the building. We actually probably do that here too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And write that off of your income here. Make numbers easy. Say you pay yourself $100,000. Throw it in the air, right? But right. now you have an $80,000 write off on the short term rental. Your effective net income is 20K. And so the taxes you would have paid on the 80 is what you say. It's a good tax benefit strategy. Yeah, I like that. Hey, what's up, guys? Nice. There you go. Feeling good. Shovels look good, man. It's all the padding that this shirt gives. <laughs> You put a 10? I put a 10. You want to go what? 85 or 85? Good, I think it's good. Okay. That's it. Yeah. It's like the heaviest I've pushed press in a while. Oh, really? I, I, I clearly do some now, but I never really do much overhead. Overhead? We'll take a light today. <laughs> we'll save it for next time. But yes, for you, I mean, you could put your nest egg into a flip. Flips offer the highest return, but are the most riskiest. Would yes, can be. I don't know. Both kind of the same. But flips also have an immediate tactical event that happens. What is that? Meaning, say you make $100,000 on a flip. Uh -huh. That is now added to your gross income. So if, that's, if you're already at a decent tax bracket, now all that gets taxed 35, 40%. So really your profit is not a grand, really 60 grand. So you put in 100 to make 60, mm -hmm. right? which is still a good return. It's still like a 60% return. Right. And then now you have a 160 nest egg. Mm -hmm. And then maybe do a couple more, build the nest egg more, and then now you have 300. And maybe for every two flips you do, you buy a rental, which is what some people do. It's a great strategy. I mean, you have to feed the beast somehow with some sort of active. Mm -hmm. and most people, like, that's actually what I forgot. Is that, like, eventually you run out of cash. <laughs> and so you can figure out where you're going to keep getting the cash from. Let's go. There you go. Nice. Have you ever been in situations where you were out of cash and you needed to get bailed out? Not since college. <laughs> we're actually the cash. No. Whatever your nest egg is, only send 50% of it. Okay. Then you can always get bailed out. See the advice? Especially for the first year. That or have a partner, so then you're always splitting risk. Like for my flip that took a year and a half longer than it should have, we then had to pay out our investors, and we needed to pull 60K to pull out the investors. Because we, we, we had a contract, we extended for two months, and then I was like, hey, I'll give you an extra premium on it. Our refi's in the trailer, they got the doc, so give me 30 money, you can not just pay me out early. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we had to come up with $60,000 of cash to wire them. And so, like most, like I, I don't have two thousand dollars laying around all the time. You know, like, yeah. yeah, it's ideally deployed somewhere, but, but luckily I had a partner, so I only had to come up with thirty, which I did have thirty, and then my partner had thirty, so we all could solve the problem. But, yeah. <laughs>
I like that you can manage, you know, like mitigate risk by having that partner, or just having someone that you can, you can count on, right? You can lean on. Times get a little bit more difficult when you're in a crunch. You split the upside, but you split the risk. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> There you go. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's more upsides to doing it with a partner than there is doing it by yourself. Yeah. Even if you take off half of the upside, you get double the network. Like, as soon as you start doing more deals, you look at twice the amount of deals, mm -hmm. do things twice as fast. There's way more upside. We have the right partner. That's the hard part, though. Yeah. Okay. But you could also, like, dig. Like, just try it for one deal. True. And only set the partnership, like, hey, we're only this one deal, this is how it felt. And then you will be about it. A lot of people would, like, do this business partnership and say, oh, now we're, like, me and you, mm -hmm. we're flying a whole deal together now. I, I do, like, we're just trying one deal, and then we'll see how the deal goes up, and, there's no, and then there's no hard feelings. Because maybe after the deal is done in a year, you want to now buy Airbnbs and Tallahassee, and I have no interest in Tallahassee. Right. Then at least we can amicably like, I could walk with this one deal, and you do your thing, I do my thing, and we had some fun. It's pretty sweet. What would be your advice for like beginner investors so they're just getting into the market? Get around as many people who are actually doing deals as much as possible. So it's like go to meetups. Like I host a meetup once a month. I think we can post about it all. Yeah. Time. What's the name of your meetup? Uh, our company is called uh, NVST, so okay. Invest Capital. Awesome. And it's on meetup. Website's investcapital.com. Yeah, every second Wednesday of the month, it's in Mopitas. And then so you go to these meetups, and a lot of people are tempted to then find a guy who's done 20 deals. Right, and most people who are 20 deals ahead of you will not then also answer your questions. Right. Because now you're just like asking for a free measure for mm -hmm. But if you find a person who's one deal ahead of you, there's like, there's juice. It's like the guy who walks into the gym and just lost 10 pounds, right? And the person who just started like, oh yeah, oh my, just try this, I just tried to do this thing. And like, they're super willing to help. Yeah. Same, same thing in investing in the gym. Okay. One deal ahead. Find those people. Hey, what was your first deal? How'd you find it? All that mm. stuff. They'll tell you. This is super exciting. And that's a wrap. I had a blast chatting real estate while working out. And again, I will not have the mic behind me. But if you like the series, let me know in the comments below. And again, my name is Josh Baldovino. I'm a marketer. I'm a real estate investor. It would mean a lot and it would mean the world to me because it does take a lot of effort to produce these videos. If you were to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. And of course, if you want to see what we're doing more on a daily basis, follow us on Instagram. I'll leave both my profile and George's profile linked down below. Lastly, if you want another video like this and you want to learn how you can buy houses without banks, here's a link to another episode. I will see you there. Cheers.